What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got some more work cut out for us on another Integra. Uh, this Integra is a repeat customer of mine. His name, he goes by Eric. He's got this beautiful Milano red, just original DA, fantastic car. Um, and he's getting some major services done to it this time. First time he had the car by, did the clutch and all that stuff. Second time, did some suspension work. And now he's getting some main services taken care of. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just throw you guys up on the long lens and I'm gonna kind of voice over this video and just get to work because we got a lot of work to do. We're doing timing belt, we're doing the water pump, we're doing the distributor with the distributor O-ring, we're doing the valve cover gasket, we're doing our new shifter, we're doing a shifter rebuild, essentially doing new bushings, new dust seal, um, those things. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be quite the day. Probably gonna take two days, it's already I think going on noon today and uh, it's a little chilly, quite chilly actually, so I'm going to work as much as I can and try and knock this stuff out. So let's get you guys set up on the tripod and let's get to work. So uh, my voiceover stuff was not working that well, mic was all loud so we're doing it this way. So let's get this started, first things first, make sure you jack up your car, use jack stands. You don't want to have a jack fail or something on you, just better safe than sorry. And you're going to be down there anyway because you got to get the belts off and whatnot. So get up on the stands. Then you're going to want to start by removing the driver side uh, wheel so that way you can get access to the crank and stuff. And then if your car still has it, if it's all original, remove the splash guard so that way you can get access to the bully, to the pulley and the belts. Then we're going to start by removing the spark plug wires and then removing the valve cover. Valve cover is held on with just a few 10 mil bolts. Make sure you remove your, uh, your valve cover ground wire there. Don't forget to remove your clutch cable if you still have it, if you haven't converted to a hydraulic system yet. And then when you're taking your valve cover off, just give a few little taps. It might be stuck on there, um, but you'll get it. And then starting off, we're going to remove the power steering pump that will give us room to work with so that way we can get the AC tensioner loosened and whatnot. Just easier to access, easier to move around, get that thing out of the way. And once it's out of the way, go ahead and loosen that AC tensioner. And then you're going to want to loosen that 14 millimeter bolt that the tensioner is actually swiveling on. So go ahead and do that. And then it will just drop right down and out of the way. And you can pull that belt right off. And then also don't forget your alternator belt. Loosen the alternator with just the 12 mil bolt up top and you might want to loosen the bottom bolt down below. You'll have to access it from underneath and then just pull it towards you. 
um, towards the front of the engine bay and slide the belt right off. And then go ahead and take your top timing cover off. In this case, there's only one 10 mil bolt. Normally there's two, but this vehicle was missing the one. So with everything out of the way, go ahead and set your motor to top dead center. To do so, you're gonna to wanna to take a 19 millimeter wrench and, uh, or I'm sorry, a 19 millimeter socket on an extension or something, get in there, turn the crank pulley counterclockwise as the way these Honda engines rotate, and you're gonna see three marks, and then about an inch over, half inch over, you're gonna see a single mark. You wanna line that single mark up with the notch, the little arrow, the line, whatever you wanna call it, on the lower timing cover. And when that is lined up, you wanna also make sure that your cams up top are lined up. You'll see two notches on there, and the words up on each cam will be at like the uh, 11 o'clock position just all the way up and slightly to the left and another way you can tell is your cam lobes will be totally flat on each side and then go ahead and remove your crank pulley there could be a little bit stuck i had to use some pry bars and uh, wiggle it around a little bit of pb blaster helps Once you get your pulley off, do not forget your Woodruff key. Uh, make sure you don't lose that. If you do, you'll be taking a trip to the dealership. Then once you got the crank pulley off, go ahead and take your lower timing cover off. Just a few more 10 millimeter bolts, nothing too hard to get. You'll also want to take that washer off that's behind the timing cover uh, so that way you can see your, uh, your mark on your crank gear to line it up with the oil pump mark. And once you got all that exposed, go ahead and support the engine from underneath with a, a jack and some wood because you are gonna have to remove your engine mount in order to get the timing bolt actually off the car. Remove your engine mount. It is a 19 millimeter or 17 millimeter, I believe, on the top, and then a 14 millimeter coming from the bottom up, a little bit tricky to get to, and the through bolt is a 17 millimeter. And to get the timing belt off, you're gonna go ahead and loosen the timing belt tensioner. It's just a 14 millimeter bolt. Uh, shouldn't be too tight, so just get in there with like a stubby socket and a ratchet and uh, should come off pretty easy. So this is a good little trick to lock your cams in place. If you don't have the cam tool, just take two wrenches. It's actually supposed to be a one inch box end and then I only had the adjustable right there and clamp those two wrenches together. Next up, you're gonna be working on changing out the water pump. The water pump is held on with five 10 millimeter bolts. Pretty easy to get to. Make sure when you're doing this though that you have a drain pen underneath because there is gonna be quite some spillage unless your uh, cooling system is already empty, but even then you might still have some in the block, so.
you can see this timing or this water pump was uh, definitely the original one nice and goopy in there so be sure to clean your mating surface and also take note that there is two bolts that are longer than the other three so those ones go at the most top and the most bottom holes of the water pump Just for safe measure, always compare your parts because you never know, you might have gotten the wrong one. In this case, the new part does not reuse the same dowels that were on the old part. So the old one is a factory unit, the new one, I'm not too sure what the brand was, it did say made in Japan, but it does not appear to be the OEM part. In there. And then I like to go ahead and use silicone or ultra gray RTV, Honda Bond, whatever you want to call it, on the mating surface of the engine block after it's all cleaned up and brake cleaned and scraped all the old material off. Install your new timing belt tensioner and you have to reuse your old spring so make sure you keep that. On the timing belt tensioner though there is a big hole and there's a small hole on its mating point. The bigger hole goes on the little uh, nipple I guess on the block, the little peg that comes out and then the smaller hole is for the spring and you attach the spring up top on the other peg coming off the side of the block. Go ahead and feed your new timing belt on, start off on the crank and then work your way around the tensioner and then around the water pump and then you'll do the exhaust cam and then the intake cam. I find that's the best way, I don't know if you can do it any other way because the way the tensioner stretches. Once you have it, slide it on, double check your marks and in my case I messed up. It kept moving on me, the crank gear kept moving just a little bit, so I had to go through and reset the timing quite a few different times. And I found that for me the easiest way was to advance the uh, crank gear about a tooth, tooth and a half, so that way when I pulled on the belt to stretch it over the cams and the tensioner would then open and, and turn that uh, crank gear, it would turn it and just line it up, so I got lucky. And once your belt is on, to tension it, because you'll notice there's some slack on the top and left side, you're gonna wanna rotate your engine about three teeth, three to four teeth, and then it'll take the tension out or, or put tension on the belt, then you can go ahead and lock down your tensioner bolt, and then spin the motor a few times by hand, I find three times, gets it all the way back to top dead center, and make sure your marks all line up after that. your marks all line up you're good to uh, go ahead and reassemble everything just remember the order that you took it apart in and in this case the customer was wanting to swap out the distributor as well so that's easy that's just three bolts and I was gonna set the ignition timing anyway And then to finish this off, the customer wanted the valve cover painted. It was already raw when he brought it to me. So I went ahead and cleaned it up with a wire wheel, get the extra sticky stuff off. And I brake cleaned it, washed it, and then hit it with some VHT high temp wrinkle paint. And then took a heat gun to it. And that is the best way that I find without an oven to get the paint to actually wrinkle and cure. And then the next day I went ahead and um, sanded the lettering off after it was all cured and reinstalled it on the car.